Good day, everyone. My name is Darren Martin. I'm a visual artist from Torbay, Newfoundland, and Labrador, Canada. I just want to welcome you to really the beginning of a series of watching and following my paintings. My career as an artist has really reemerged in the last three years. Most people that know me actually know me for being a performer, professional singer, private music instructor, but I actually did art school before I did music school and was a huge part of my life, um, but took a break from it for almost 15 years of my life until being really encouraged by my wife, Georgina, to bring art back into my life. I truly believe that that part of who I was was done, was completed, that I really had nothing else to do with art. And coming back to it three years in July, I found so much peace and so much joy in making art. It's been such a wonderful journey, and I hope you'll travel with me on that journey. Here I'm actually sketching in the underdrawing for my newest piece. And I really hope that you enjoy watching as the paintbrush dances across the canvas, as colors and energy and life emerge. My style allows me to work on a painting rather quickly. This is a large piece, it's 16 by 40. But my style is very, for me, very intuitive. And I just do what my heart feels. I often say that what I lack in technical prowess, I make up for in the heart that these paintings have. And I love every single moment of it. So grab your favorite drink, whether it be a nice cup of coffee or tea, stretch out on your comfy chair and just watch as this painting comes to life. This is Breakthrough. You'll notice in a lot of my work that there's often churches. That has a lot to do with my spiritual life and how important church is to me and to my family. I'm here sketching it in now. Very loose. Uh, I've actually sort of gone to using purples or dark blues a lot for doing my outline work, um, the initial drawings. Um, Instead of black, I've moved sort of away from that. Most of my work, you'll notice, has very strong outline uh, element to it because my career as an artist really began through illustration and comic book art. In high school, myself and my dear, one of my best friends, Adam, we worked for a comic book company and we were working towards having our own uh, independent comic published through a company at the time in Newfoundland that was producing comic books. So you will see that element of illustrative quality, I think, in my work. I work quickly. I don't spend a whole lot of time in one area. You'll notice that I'm jumping around a bit, and that's partly because of who I am. Right now, I'm taking out that second steeple. We both agreed, myself and my wife, that we didn't need that one, so here I am just kind of painting it out so I don't have to see it and I can work around it with color. So I use a lot of bold colors. A lot of uh, people that I know call me a colorist as an artist. So color is a big, important thing. It's so funny because the majority of my work in the past as an illustrator was black and white, whether it be pencil or um, fine line pens, Sharpies, such things as that. And now my work is so much about the color and bright, pastels or bright vivid colors we certainly hope that 
you enjoy as, as it all comes together. You'll notice too as I'm painting that this large canvas, the image is not centered, trying to keep the interest not completely centered. Now, not saying that that's not something that I do. Yes, I have paintings where the focal point is, is centered. But using interesting composition, I try to draw people into really the most important part. And really, it's going to be that sun right there, which has become kind of a um, defining factor or a trademark of my work is the we call it the sunflower sun, and you'll really start to see that come together as color comes in there. Okay, yeah, I do paint fast, but not this fast. I'm gonna be speeding up certain areas of this just so that you can see it unfold a little quicker. The trees that I paint are, I think, somewhat trademarked to my work as well. They're very sort of uh, angular, but still organic in a sense. They're bushy, but they have a real curve to them. And I hope you can see that as this sketch starts to come through. Just to let you know, this is actually being painted in my front garden. So it looks like I'm in the middle of forest. Well, here in Torbay, we kind of are in the middle of the woods. And we love it so much. It's so inspiring. Okay, so here we go, bringing color in. This is probably, for me, my least favorite part of the whole making art process. Because you essentially have this huge, oftentimes huge canvas, with a whole lot of white areas that you have to fill in. And I'm not typically one that does um, an alla prima or um, basically priming the canvas with a, a color like yellow ochre or burnt umber. Um, I have, I guess, done that a little bit, but I typically don't. Usually I just kind of work in on the white and, you know, sometimes I water down the paint so it'll flow a little better. But I always call this the ugly phase of the painting because you can see bits and pieces of things you don't want to see. It looks messy and loose. So even though my style is very loose, it's those crisp lines that I really want to enhance as the painting gets closer to completion. So check it out. Um, as you can see, it was windy out. And uh, as we say in Newfoundland, it's enough to blow the horns off a goat or blow your false teeth out of your mouth or blow your coffee out of your cup. It's often very, very windy in Newfoundland. We're not here because of the hot weather. We're here because we just love that it's rugged and it's just a place that most people, when they come here, they never forget and they often always want to come back.
It's a little close-up view um, of me trying to fill in all this sky area using a variety of blues and purples mixed together, um, often adding some white as well. I'm just trying to get, like I said, those big areas filled in. They look very rough right now, um, but then they're overlaid with some more colors, more uh, concentrated colors and more um, defining lines that are, I think, typical of my style, those crisp, sort of illustrative lines. Finally, yes, get to use some yellow. This is a uh, cadmium hue, I believe. I did mix some white in with it to cover. Um, one of the things I find with yellows and oranges a lot of times is that they're very thin and it often requires several layers to cover so that it's not see-through. Uh, I don't want it to be transparent in this case. Um, I really do love the richness of those colors, but the problem being is that it's just like painting a wall, really. Those colors often don't uh, cover very well, so you need to kind of give them a base color, a little bit of white or another color to add to it to kind of uh, make it so that it lays down more um, opaque. And I'm really loving making that sun so stylized uh, the color is needs to pop and and in this piece the sun really is sort of the crowning point of this piece and i really want it to look good you'll see it develop more as the painting goes along grass. Here it is, starting to lay it in. Now, I just use a, typically use a filbert, a flat, sometimes a small sort of round brush, but most of my paintings are done with two to three brushes maximum. I don't tend to use tons and tons of brushes, even though I, I really literally have enough to sink a ship. So here I'm laying them in, just using lots of color, um, and then laying in those strokes. Here I go laying in colors for this church. Starting as a, um, a, a whitened down version of more of a lizard and crimson hue. Um, so I'm making that front side look lighter, of course. Now here's the thing about my style. Not everything, perspectives are not always right colors uh, and the way light hits some things might not be obviously as if I was looking at a photo. This is all being done from my mind and also just the way that I want to capture it. As you can see now the color for the side of the building where the sun isn't hitting is going to be a little darker and this is only the first coat. I do add more as we go along and as I say all those lines that I've done in the initial drawing you know, a lot of them get covered with paint, which will be repainted over um, in the final stages, just to clean up, add the crispness that I talk about to the entire painting. It's really enjoyable. Um, like I said before, this is really the part of the painting, though, that I find the most tedious and uh, which gives me the least amount of pleasure is because it, it is messy and sort of unattractive at this point and I'm just trying to fill in all those blank spaces just to get as much paint on that canvas as I can so that the detail process um, is much easier overall.
now into that right side of the canvas. Going back now after I've added in that yellow ochre for the rocks or the cliff. Um, I'm adding greens in again now for the hillside um, with this little house over here. One of my favorite things that I love to do is the idea that there is no real straight lines. Um, nothing is done with rulers, so houses, you know, they're, they're bent. The roofs follow a curve. The house themselves, they follow a curve. In this case, it's almost like everything is leaning in towards the sun, which I think creates great movement and interest in a piece of art. Here I am, I'm there showing my uh, ADHD again, uh, where I have to jump around. Of course, here I was laying in color and then suddenly I have to go back in now. Oh, let's put in some, some more crisp lines for those windows on the church. Let's bring out those lines a little bit more. Even though technically all those colors and shading were not done for the church, I needed to go back and just reiterate those lines for myself. Um, also letting you know, if you hear any extraneous noises during these videos, it's because we have three very wonderful but full of life young daughters, Grace, Faith, and Hope. We also have seven huskies. That's right, seven. That's a lot of fur. And they can also be quite the choir when they get excited. And in my studio, we also have beautiful little black cat named Fang who likes to drink out of my paint water much to my chagrin <laughs> adding in some headstones well because just about every little church in Newfoundland has a graveyard or a churchyard on its property so just adding in a couple of headstones I don't typically paint like a normal cemetery with many headstones I may paint three or four just to add that, you know, element that we're so used to seeing. It's starting to shape up. Starting to look like, okay, I can start to see something coming out of the canvas here now. But still, this was only fairly early in the process. Establishing strong line work, such an important part of my process. As I go in here now into the rocks, I'm adding in those strong lines. I'm bringing in lines within the water. I really want to be able to keep that in my paintings. So instead of things being just a soft transitions with very little line work, my work is the opposite. Um, the transitions are there, but maybe not in that same soft way that you're used to seeing in more photorealism styles. My style requires me to have that really, those strong lines that anchor my work. I really like the juxtaposition of the more angular, solid, straight lines with the more organic, smoother, curved lines that you see in the sun and in some of those other elements. But rocks, I always tend to use very straight, angular lines that for me create such a strength element to my paintings.
I want my trees to bend in the wind. I want to feel the energy of them curving under the great strength of nature. I love the idea that they're not just straight angular. They are very curved. They are very, very organic. Let the brush do the work. Make big decisions. Whoosh, whoosh. A couple strokes can really make the difference between something just looking like a simple drawing to bringing great detail and life to it so quickly. Day two, details, details, and more details. Well, everything has been basically filled in, so now day two was for me to be able to really hone in on that line work, really be able to start bringing stuff out, adding more touches of color from here to there, but really establishing clean, clear lines. Here you see I'm bringing in 
more darker shades of green for the grass to create an element of depth. So instead of things being one solid color, we definitely are not looking for that in this piece. I'm starting to lay in, like I said, the darker green, which allows us to see highlights and lowlights in our work. some highlights to the uh, right side of the painting to the grass to give the idea that you know the sun is reflecting off of it um, adding some sense of warmth and certainly a great deal of character I hope to this piece Okay, so this was super fun. We've gone in more now with that darker uh, lizard crimson hue over the color that's already been established. I really wanted to darken it up more. And it also allows the lines that were underneath the sketch to start to disappear, as we don't really want to see those because that's where I had sort of sketched in the piece of land. So we're trying to eliminate some of those lines as well. And that rich color, oh, it's so beautiful. And it's falling much nicer now that there had already been a color underneath it. So it's not uh, translucent. It's allowing it to be more opaque.
now comes the fun part, laying in those highlights and lowlights of the ocean. As you can see, my approach to painting water may be a little different than most artists do. It's got a very angular but still organic shape to it, but it's a highlighting and lowlighting process and those strong lines that really bring it out for me. This is one of my favorite things. It's funny how much I love to paint the ocean, being someone that can't swim and definitely has a fear of the ocean. But there is a very grounding, calming element to the water. Enriching my sunflower sun. One of my favorite elements of many of my paintings is the sunflower shaped sun. Definitely drawing influence and showing great love for my favorite artist, Vincent van Gogh, who sadly only sold one painting in his lifetime and suffered greatly from mental illness. A lot of my journey as a visual artist is a journey through rediscovery and also allowing me to be able to figure out how to navigate a new work, a new way of life, and also dealing with mental illness myself.
It was at this point in the day that we realized that the wind was starting to really take over and it was very difficult for us to be able to continue painting. Also, we wanted to go out and explore as a family more coastlines and beautiful scenery that Newfoundland has to offer. If you haven't been here, you really need to come. Check out the beautiful scenery. Visit and enjoy time with the beautiful people of our province. We know that this has been a very difficult time during COVID, not being able to see family, not being able to welcome people in. But we pray soon that that will change and that you'll be able to enjoy our beautiful province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Please enjoy this final step as you'll now see the final piece as it's being unveiled. Thank you for joining with us, and we sure hope that you'll come back again to see more painting. God bless.